Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith, and this one's for Christopher Dyer, who asked how to make looping motion graphics for digital signage. Now, typically, After Effects would be the go-to application for creating motion graphics and digital signage, and that's great. Well, I want to show you how we can do many of the same things here in Premiere Pro. I'm also going to create something that spans two screens, and um, you wouldn't believe how easy this is. I want the animation to move from one screen to another. I'm going to do two vertical HD screens as they would be set up in a lobby somewhere in a trade show. Uh, but you could put them side by side. You could make any matrix of multiple screens and do the same thing. Um, I'm just going to use some quick animation uh, of uh, some Photoshop layers and video and show you how to match the video so that it loops seamlessly. All right, let's have a look. So this is what we're going to create. So this is our digital sign. You can see that some weather information comes up. The leaves fall from one screen right into the next screen. And I just had them fall off to the screen. I, I could pile them on the bottom if I wanted, but now they're just falling in behind the grass. And you can see the logo comes up. And I loop this so once the leaves disappear, They'll come back at the top, fall in, and you'll see the video of the leaves moving around at the top and it is seamless. Okay, so the first thing I did was create a Photoshop file with a bunch of leaves in it. And these are all transparent leaves so that I don't have to mask them out. Each one is on its own layer. I brought that in, placed each one of them in the sequence, Actually, the first thing I did was create a new sequence and I just used a custom setting, 1080 by 3840. That's the equivalent of two HD screens on top of each other. I'm not doing these as two separate uh, sequences. One sequence and we'll export them out and crop them on the way out so we don't have to create two separate timelines. This is all done with one timeline. So you'll see that this is, if I go to my sequence settings, this one's 1080 by 3840. And you can see it's, it's fitting in right there. I'm going to click on the first leaf I animated, and in the effects controls, there's a bunch of the uh, keyframes right there. So let me just turn off a bunch of the other stuff. And just show you that one leaf. So there's the leaf falling down. And all I'm doing is changing the position and the scale, I am not uniformly scaling. If I, if I uniformly scale it, then the leaf is going small, big, small, big. But if you change the scale uh, different for each one, it kind of looks like the, the, the leaf is falling like this. It's not really three-dimensional, but because there's multiple leaves, you don't really have time to stop and identify that that's fake. They're, they're just simply moving, and you can see all of the different scale properties there as they show up. So if I zoom in on this, you'll see there they are. You can see how it looks like it's falling in 3D. So I did each one of these separately and I did them at different rates so they would fall differently. And they have this dreamy quality. They're not photorealistic. They're more stylized in the way that they're falling. And an easy way to change the speed, so I started at the beginning and went to the end, and if I twirled down the position, um, all I did was select these and move these handles around. So for, for some of these, you'll see that I move the handle around a lot. And what that simply means, instead of it falling linear, because if you leave this as linear keyframes, then all the leaves fall down as one giant chunk. But if you open up and change the, the way that they fall, then they'll be more influenced by this 
fake resistance to air. They're flowing differently. Just, it adds a little bit of an interest to them. It also helps if you have a bit of parallax. So because each leaf is on its own track, if one leaf falls in front of the other, it gives you that feeling of depth. Okay? Now I just did four here. I could have uh, duplicated these layers multiple times. I could have had hundreds of leaves on there. I didn't want to have you. Let me do, tell you one thing about performance. Th this is an HP uh, ZBook with quad core, uh, eight threads, SSDs. This is a pretty maxed out um, a laptop. When I'm creating this 3840, it's chugging along. So don't expect to work at this at super fast speeds. It's way faster than After Effects, but still keep that in mind. And now if you had 10 screens here, if you had to do the math and combine a bunch, bunch of these together, it's going to be even slower. So um, I digress. So that is the leaves, and then the leaves fall beyond the bottom. Okay? That's pretty easy. The grass is just a transparent file. So let me let me zoom in and go all the way to the bottom. The grass is just a ping that I found and the leaves fall down behind that, right? Uh, this could have been other leaves. If I, I had a, a bed of leaves that they were falling on or falling behind, I could do that. Again, I did not want to have that much time. Okay, um, now the sky, if I turn on the background video layer, you'll see the, the leaves moving up in the top. And obviously I, I don't have a video of the tree branches at the top and 3840 aspect ratio because the camera doesn't shoot that. So this is a typical HD video stuck up near the top and it ends at the bottom. And all I did to fill that in was create a blue background. And if I isolate that and show you what's going on here, it's a blue background that has a four color gradient in here. And the reason I did that was if we look at the top, let me zoom out a little bit more, you'll see a bit of clouds over here and less blue over here. So I'm trying to match the top two colors. And a great way to do that is to use the four color gradient. So if I click on the coordinates, you'll see the position of those colors. So I chose a little lighter blue in one side, a little darker blue in another, added a mask, and then I, I um, uh, feathered the mask quite a bit. It's kind of hard because the, the one leaf is going near the edge, but uh, I was able to do that. So that gives me a 38 by 40 solid background that looks kind of like a video. It looks like the grass is at the bottom, although I, I should have probably... I used the Lumetri effect on the leaves above. I didn't use it on the grass because I'm trying to create a fall look. So I, I made the, the uh, uh, leaves a little bit more orange. But now I've got a full panel of color uh, and video. So next thing up is how did I make the video of these leaves. So you'll see that the, the, um, the video has different levels of motion. There's a lot of motion and then there's fairly still motion. Okay, so it starts out fairly still and then moves. And the video um, is almost 30 seconds. So this animation is 30 seconds long. Um, but if I loop this, watch the loop, Boom, you can see that. So how did I fix that? That loop does not work. Well, here's what I did. Let me delete this. We'll drag the video in. I went to my 15 second mark, one five period enter, and I cut the video. So I don't care about this. It's now exactly half of, of the uh, duration. The top part, the, the beginning is where it is. And we need to move that position up. 
The top part, the beginning is where it's fairly static and then it moves a lot. So what I did was I moved this to the end. I'm holding the Alt key on Windows, Option on Mac, and, and duplicating this. So now it's the same thing, and you'll still see a really bad loop in here. But if I change the speed, so right click, speed, reverse speed, OK, then we have a seamless loop. The reason it's seamless is the end of the, the bottom one is the beginning of the other one. So they're the exact same frame. It's just moving in reverse motion. Now, obviously you couldn't do this with something that you could detect reverse motion, but leaves blowing around on a tree for the most part, you can't really tell the, the direction of those. And it actually works in here. Okay, so um, that's the looping video. We've got the, the blue background, we've got grass, we've got the leaves. Okay, now we've got all these elements. I dropped in a few titles in here so you can see the title. And this particular title has a uh, opacity setting of overlay instead of normal. Normal was a little bit too much. So I set this as overlay. And another reason I did that was when the leaves are in front, you can actually see the type over top of that. So it helps to blend that together. And then the bottom, I had another logo show up. Okay, so we've got our animation. It finishes at the end. They're gone, and then we go back to the beginning. The trees are moving a little bit and the leaves are falling down and the temperature comes up. Great. 3840, 1080. How do we get this out to two separate screens? You won't believe how easy this is. Let's export this out. File. Export media. And there's a setting over here called crop. Usually you look at the output setting. That's the typical setting you see when you ex export. But if you go to the source setting and look at the crop, here's the crop setting. And all I do is I just change these numbers here. So if I want the top, then my bottom is 1920, half of 3840. And then once I export that out, I move that down here. And then I have the top at 1920 and I've exported out two videos. That's how easy it is. Now this would also work, like I said, if you had a matrix of horizontal or vertical. So if I had 10 screens and I wanted to do this, I create, again, my, my sequence size large and then export out each one of those little pieces. Pretty darn easy. So I'll just show you one last thing. I exported this out um, and then I've just, I've got a simple corner pin on here. So if you haven't used corner pin, it's in the effects and you'll see what the corner pin does is it sets up those four corners. So I just brought the video in and then just positioned that a little bit more accurately for each one of these. Same thing on the bottom, same thing on the top, so that the video is playing in those two videos. And, and it gives you an example of what this looks like. And this was just a, a still image I found of a, of a lobby that ha actually had a digital sign inside there. So yes, most people would use After Effects for this. And of course, After Effects, you can do infinitely more in the motion graphics world. But hey, if it's something as simple as this um, or you know, you can, you can, I want to, I want to give Premiere Pro its props when it comes to motion graphics, because you really can do a heck of a lot in there. So um, I just wanted to show you this in Premiere Pro, create motion graphics for signs. Hopefully you like it. If you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more, join us on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.